fall is definitely in the air. I wish you guys could smell this. It's a couple big old beef roasts. I'm pretty sure the only reason I live in a place that I can't stand for half the year is fall. The maples are changing and dropping leaves. The sumac is at peak color. Hey, King. This is our little, our little, he's a very big percher on. If you can see, he has an auction tag right on his butt. He was, he's a geriatric old working horse percher on stallion who when our friends were at the auction, saw him there. He doesn't move the greatest because he has a really bad old injury to a leg, but it's completely calcified, healed over, doesn't cause him any pain. Um, but we knew, she knew, that the only people that would be buying this old guy were the meat buyers at the, at the auction. So he's aged, he needed his teeth done, he doesn't get, he doesn't move around great. He's extremely skinny and he used up his value in wherever he came from. So he was, so he was dumped there for meat price. Um, so Mr. King here is just going to sit and eat and live out how many years or months or days or whatever he has left in retirement not many people are set up for a geriatric horse, a stallion, and one that can't compete or really be around other horses because he's not very mobile. So this is our nursing home. <laughs> so leaves are changing color. Nothing like a good old beef roast in the crock pot to say fall is here. Um, going more into that later fall now. And some of our trees have now started to cue, our trees that are in development that we don't touch until they've reached peak color have started to cue that we can now come in and do some work on them. Um, just like when we talk about our trees cueing for spring repotting, we can't handle them as a whole. We have to look at each tree individually. So I have the two blueberries here. This tree is ready for us to go in and prune on. This tree is not yet ready. It has not reached peak color. Um, and we'll come in and look at this. Um, this tree has already reached peak color and in fact has even started to shed some of its um, leaves within here. So we're gonna be working on this bigger blueberry today, but we're gonna be waiting on this blueberry. It might say it's ready in a couple days. It might be next week. Um, we have a big cold spell coming back to the area now after this, um, after tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow? I think it's tomorrow. I'd have to check the forecast again. But let's go in then and get some late fall pruning done on our deciduous trees that are in early development. So if we look at the tree that we're going to be pruning today, this is the bigger blueberry. This is a Chippewa Valley blueberry, um, specially designed to be hardy in my cold zone, um, which is thus called the Chippewa Valley. These leaves, just about all of them, except just the tips of this newer one and right here, have reached their peak color. This very, very brilliant bright red, really offset with this really nice blue-green pot. Um, so because this tree has reached its peak color, we can go in now and do our pruning work on it. All of the chlorophyll has been pulled out of those leaves back into the vascular system. Um, so we know that these leaves no longer serve a purpose for this tree as far as really photosynthesizing much for the remainder of the season. Um, in contrast then, if we go and we look at the small blueberry, we can see that we still have quite a, plu quite a, boo quite a bit of green foliage on here that's just starting to change. And when the blueberry starts to change color, it first will go into this burgundy offset color. And it's always gonna be your foliage that's more direct 
sun exposure that's going to be changing first. So if we can see right under that, we have a patch of green and some just starting to brown. That is because this leaf, whoops, yep, there it goes. <laughs> oh, wasp, wasp. Sorry for the wasp dance. That's because the leaf that was just above it was shading this area. So that's why that one has not started to transition yet. Um, and then as it moves through, it gets that burgundy-ish color. It goes to a darker purple, which is seen here. Oop, there we go. See this dark, dark purple? In contrast to when it's reached its peak color, it gets brilliant, brilliant red. Much like our, um, you know, our sumac coloring. I am really, really liking so far working with these blueberries. Um, unusual, atypical, but they meet all of the bonsai requirements. Look at how this is a young tree, but it still has super rustic, platy old looking bark. It back buds super well from many areas. These leaves without doing anything to reduce them because this tree's not yet in refinement. Um, they have already reduced on their own. So once we start working that, it'll probably reduce quite a bit more, um, especially once we start employing things like defoliation techniques. Um, so this tree, it's not ready. We still have a lot of green. We have more burgundy color overall and just very few areas that have reached that peak coloration. So we'll put the little blueberry to the side for another day. It's not quite ready. And we're gonna jump in and work on this one then. Still haven't found my favorite silver scissors, but we got these itty bitty ones and we have branch cutters, so that'll be fine. So this tree we did not do anything with earlier in the season. It has, other than we removed things that we didn't want, we left most of it because it was starting with its flower budding and I really wanted the blueberry. Emily really wanted the blueberries on these. Um, if it's an edible bonsai, it's her favorite tree. So, <laughs> also I wanted it to cross pollinate with that littler blueberry. This variety is a self pollinating tree. The other one is not, and it needs to cross pollinate with a tree of a different species. Um, so let's go in and do some cuts on this tree. Um, Our wound is healing over nicely here. Most likely the front of our tree is either gonna be this view or this view. We don't know yet. This branch here is going to be left on to continue to thicken the base. It's in a perfectly placed area. So we're just going to leave this one on later. Maybe I'll wire it down just to have it out of the way. Um, with my recent cleanup, I don't have a lot of spare wire lay laying around. But if we go in here then and look, can I just like wait you out of the way for now? Just hold you there. There we go. <laughs> um, I don't think I want a branch coming out this low as a first branch off that trunk. Whether it's the front or the back, I think I want my main branches to start to develop here and most of my canopy and the secondary and tertiary structure will focus on developing in this area. So we'll go in and take this low branch off here. I hope these scissors are good enough. Actually, let's use not going to need my pliers. So let's use the pliers to keep it out of the way for now. All right. So we're going to go in and clean up that stump nice and close. The blueberry variety I have found likes to put out lots of new plant root shoots off the off of there, which we don't need. Coming spring, this is a tree that will be doing more aggressive root work. I plan to repot it in a small grain APL 
with a kanuma and then use a special fertilizer again with this tree because a blueberry has a super acidic loving temperament like they put the azalea to shame these guys like it very much down in the you know the four range versus an azalea likes it in that five range um, so if you're going to be doing a blueberry, you do want to make sure that you are supplying a very acidic grow environment. That's why they don't do well in my yard. I'm not going to want this branch that's coming off back here. don't know if that looks like it has some new buds for next year so we're going to leave that and we want to take back our tips going to thick to thinner and with that thought process of where we're going to develop our canopy this piece too big it doesn't offer much taper so that's quite a nice branch line comes up here it divides we have a branch here we'll have a branch over here i'm actually going to take that back to one growing out it's an alternating pattern so we'll have this one coming out growing this way this one looks really nice this will be that leader and this is kind of where our canopy will be developing We're just going to shorten and bring this back more and see what we get next year. And this one needs to come back quite a bit. Right to, let's start here. And in the future, put a little wire on this if we want to bring it down more. Just a little guide wire. Blueberry cuttings are running away. That's fine. No carnage cam for you, Jay. It's too windy. start to see where we're going to have our canopy and our branch in this tree develop then. So let's go ahead and move on to the other side. And I am viewing them from both sides. We do have to get this wound rolled over and healed, healed in, <laughs> healed more. Um, but I think this would be our best front. If not, it's still set up to have a good front this way. We would probably just take off this branch. All right, so now we're going to come over and we are going to work on this side. So it comes up really nice here and then it branches and we're going to bring this one back. Let's take it to here to a bud facing this direction. We have this nice part coming back there. We'll take it right back to there. It comes up here. And in reality, I think we're just going to completely take it back to that lower branch. Or, um, yeah. So we walk up, we have this branch coming out in the back here. here. I don't think I want this piece here dividing again. We have 
this piece back here and we'll just take it back. This piece is developing way too thick and way too big to be in proportion. It looks good. And reducing our height. There. I want this back one probably to come back more. It's not very well tapered if we're going to keep it. So this tree is done. As you can see now, you can see where we're I'm planning, we, where we are planning to build the tree will be from here to here. Now, depending on what this puts out, this will probably be reduced back a little bit more. Uh, we have a bud here, a bud here. These guys back bud super well. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just go in and clean up any cuts that we've made previously. All right, so the next thing that I need to do with this tree as I'm pulling out our trees in early deciduous, early trees in early deciduous, our <laughs> trees in early development and doing that last pruning on them, I do wanna go in then and also clean up the bark so that they are ready to go in the cold frame. So to do that, just a simple toothbrush and my vinegar. The, um, Vinegar is a pH that is very, very harmful to moss and algae both. So the little, the big blueberry, my bigger, bigger blueberry is ready when the time is time to move into the cold frame. I do like all this natural, nice movement we're getting in this tree and that flow with how very little it's been worked because it was burying. Um, so let's go look at some other trees and some other fall color for today. So this is a azalea. It is a deciduous type variety azalea and it is just starting to change color. So much like the blueberry and the burning bush does, it's first going to go to a deep, deep purple. Some of these are starting to blush up I do not plan to do any prune work on this tree this fall because last year it had its hard cutbacks. Um, these are all brand new branching in that. And if we go in right now and work in azalea, you just have to be expecting you're not going to get flowers next year because it is in the fall that they set their flower buds for next year. Um, so I did not have flowers this year. We repotted it into yeah, the base on this tree is just absolutely ridiculous. It's never been wired. I do want to clean this base up and clean the stump up here though. I do want to go in right now though and clean up the algae since we do have it out and we have our algae cleaning stuff out. So that's done and then I want to go in and clean up the stump right here. I'm pretty sure I just threw that stump piece in my coffee. Oh, speaking of coffee, it's been a rough day today already for me. So, um, this morning, I grabbed my coffee cup thinking I was gonna take a sip of coffee. I did not take a sip of coffee. Instead, I took a sip of, um, I use a coffee mug to mix up my fish fry food. So I mix crushed North Fin vitamin flakes with krill <laughs> and some brine. <laughs> that was a rude awakening, guys. 
Um, so yeah, it was not coffee, but I got my daily dose of my omega-3s for sure. The little azalea is going to go back on the bench. Burning bush, we're going to revisit this one as soon as it reaches peak color. It's just again starting to get that um, burgundy-ish color change on this dark evergreen leaf. These will go to a very, very vibrant bright red, just kind of like that blueberry does. Um, it's in this really nice, oh, gosh darn it. It's got this really nice um, blue-green glazed pot that sets it nice. It's got this really, really nice um, trunk base spread here, it goes up into the two trunks. What I don't like, and this was the first season with it, is right after here is how straight and without taper these are. So I'm already planning my cuts and we'll be reducing this tree down quite a bit. Um, I'm guessing this branch is probably going to come down to here with this as that new continuation leader. This one is gonna also come down to here with this as the new continuation leader. And this one will also be coming down to this. And by making those cuts and reducing our primary structure back down where it's very, very straight and really doesn't have much taper, um, it's gonna set our primary structure up then for some really natural, more movement and change of direction within that. So this again is a tree in very early development. So we don't touch it for a fall prune until our foliage has reached at least peak color and potentially even started to fall off. Once it reaches peak color, we have about two weeks and the sun is now shining and the Asian beetles are gonna come out and start attacking me. They do leave the trees alone and we can go look at some Asian beetle carnage if you'd like. The redwood forest is just starting. Hey Ruby, what you doing? There's Ruby in the back. To do some color change here, this is the side that's getting the most direct sunlight right now. Um, what I will do now that it's just starting to change color and will be dropping some of those um, frond pieces is I lay a muslin cloth down over the top of the dirt so it still gets lots of oxygen exchange here, um, but it keeps it from creating a huge mess of having to clean all of that off um, moving into the cold frame. But if we come under here, look at this, one, two, three, four, five... We have mass. That's what you get for biting my tree or trying to bite it. Um, they really don't harm the trees at all. Because I spray them. I spray them. Um, for the Asian beetles, I use the um, foliage 3-in-1 Bonide. I think it's BioAdvantage is who makes it now spray. And I hook it up to my hose, and I just literally fly it over everything. Um, I even spray the house because it seems to keep the population down from coming, wanting to come in through the windows. So those benches are looking fine. All right, so I hope you guys are enjoying some really nice fall weather before the cold moves in. Um, for me, I know I am. And we will come back and continue to revisit many of the trees that are in early development when it's they're cueing that it's time for us and they are ready for us to come in and do this work. Um, so I hope you guys are having fun. Have fun with your bonsai.